first I'm going to try removing some of the gray with an acne treatment. I've never done this before, so hopefully it goes well. I'm back and today I am terrified but also oh excited because I'm gonna be making my first ever custom doll on camera. Ow! I'm really glad I just cut my nails. That could have been worse. Is my nose red? You guys can't see. I can't see. Ah, this is already starting off so well. <laughs> also, before we get started, I'll let you know that today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, but more on that in a bit. Because first, we need to unbag the beauties. So you can see what we're starting with today. Also, please keep in mind that although I enjoy a good customization video and many a creator of such things, um, I am not those people, nor do I have the skill that they possess. I wish I did, but I don't. So just know that everything I'm doing today is most likely wrong. And so I welcome all of your comments, critiques, and helpful suggestions in the uh, comment box below. I will read them. I will learn from them. But as for me now, I'm going to go based on what I've done in the past because I have made two others. Why Am I still talking and not opening? Um, and we're just gonna hope that they're not any worse than they're starting, which is probably not even possible. So as long as you guys know that today is a work with me while I figure things out video and not so much a tutorial, then we should be good. I picked these two dolls up in a bag for $5 at the thrift store a couple months ago, actually, with the intent on fixing this one right here that you can't see very well. So we will definitely switch down to the table in just a second. So I've got one there and another here. And as you can see, uh, it looks as though somebody already tried to give them a lovely makeover with what I can only assume is black permanent marker. So, yep. <laughs> That's gonna be fun. Actually, in truth, I picked these up specifically because of that marker, mostly because I knew that no one else is gonna wanna pick them up based on their markered appearance. Honestly, they're both quite tragic. So I hope, despite how limited my skills of customization are, that I'll be able to make them look ship shape and seaworthy, except they won't be going out to sea because Jen's terrified of water. I think I can actually work with that. From what I can tell though, other than needing a good cleaning, the outfits are pretty much in intact. This one definitely needs a bit of sewing to it, but otherwise I think those are salvageable. Like they don't appear to be damaged by permanent marker whatsoever, which is honestly really nice. And we will switch down to the table in a second so you can see fully what they look like before we get started and I'll clean them. But my hope is that at the end of the day, I might have something that looks like this beauty here. I am so proud of this doll. I have taken so many pictures and tried to share her on my Instagram so many times, but I knew that I wanted to save her for a special reveal. And this is it. Now this doll here, my daughter found for me last summer at a thrift store for $2.99. I'm going to share pictures because obviously I didn't film it then. And she didn't look quite as tragic as this one here, but they are in fact the same doll. Basically, she was also suffocated in a bag and laden down with some crocheted 70s inspired clothing and some really gnarly looking hair. So I took her out, gave her a wash, washed the clothes, but then definitely didn't keep them, and then went to work on her hair. And by going to work, I mean, I chopped it all off and found a donor with this beautiful Joanne Dirt here who is really rocking this mullet. In fact, I should probably continue customizing her to make this a thing. I mean, I don't think we've had a Barbie with a super long mullet like that. That's just a naked Barbie I'm holding up. <laughs> so anyways, after I did all that, gave her a cut and style. I had to borrow a dress from my daughter because obviously I don't have the vintage ballerina dress, nor did I have shoes for her. So these were borrowed from a sparkle girl and ta-da, my wonderful ballerina was ready. Although at that point I had already done one previous. It just didn't get past the reroute stage, which would be this beauty right here. She's still incomplete. I need to fix a neck split on her and finish off her bangs. But other than that, I'm really Really proud of her. It's just so funny that she's technically my first, but she's my first because when I started working on her, I had only done the reroute for this doll here because she had so much more things that she needed. Believe me, guys, here's what she started as literally a head. I don't think <laughs> we can blame me for moving on to the next doll. I had a false sense of accomplishment after I finished her hair and it turned out pretty decent. Okay, so I moved on to my ballerina doll. And since all she needed was a washed body and new hair, 
It stands to reason that she would be done first. And she turned out so great. So, I mean, I'm very proud of her. And eventually she got a face. So, I mean, really, it all worked out for the best. And so this is the hope that I have for this lovely lady right here. Although there's definitely going to be a lot more involved. She's missing her crown. She's got very loose limbs. Her hair has had some work done, which is less than desirable. Her face is stained. And I mean, she's just a hot mess, but I have high hopes. So let's switch down to the table and get started. All right, so I just took that elastic band off. That's disgusting. It just crackled away in my hands. But here we are ready to get started. As you can see, the current state of my two dolls is not so bad actually on the ballerina that I plan to work on today as it is on this doll here. Funny story is they looked nothing like these when originally released. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison, shall we? Starting with the ballerina doll. This is what she looks like now or what I'll be starting with versus what she looked like when she came out in 1975 as the ballerina Barbie or at least similar to what she looked like. I'm going to be sharing photos with you from my friend's restored dolls because I didn't want to take anyone else's. But you know what? Not so very far off from what I have here. She could have been a lot worse. As for this one here who is currently rocking what resembles a bit of a stewardess outfit but when she was released in 1985 as the golden dream Barbie she looked shiny and clean which is a very different look than what we have here today. In fact, funny story, I actually found this same doll and after a very thorough hair cleaning, she looks quite presentable. Oh my gosh, the resemblance is just uncanny. Anyways, regardless of how they currently appear, thankfully the doll I'm going to be working on only really has hair that has to be dealt with. I'm going to try to work with the graying on her face and see if I can turn her into something glamorous again, even if they end up looking completely different than they originally did. As long as they don't look like this, I'm going to consider it a win. So I'm just gonna take off their clothes and we can get started on washing. Ooh, she's got super loose limbs. And then we'll take off hers, even though I'm not working on her today. I wanna give these a nice hand washing off camera because nobody has time for that. And they'll be perfectly usable again because they're in very good condition. Like I'm not seeing any permanent marker anywhere, which is why I believe it was only the hair. <laughs> also, let me know if you recognize either of these. It's very possible they belong to Barbie, more so this one than this one. It's not like I know every single doll that was released, but I don't think this one is unless it was meant to be lingerie because that hemline is mighty high, folks. That's all I'm saying. But anyways, yeah, enough of that. Now it's time to get serious. Look, Barbie is ready in her super chic, modestly designed paper towel ensemble. First things first, I'm going to take these pins out of her head because I realized quite quickly as I got stabbed through the back of her neck that they were long and sharp. So... Ooh, look how long this one is. It definitely must have been the red one that stabbed me. That's all right. I guess it wouldn't really be one of my videos if I didn't get hurt at least once, huh? And now I'm going to proceed to cut off all her hair because I really don't see much point in washing it if I'm going to reroute her, which I'm definitely going to be doing. And I'm going to be cutting on top of a piece of paper towel for easy cleanup. As I do this, please just keep in mind that once again, I am new to the customization process. Things that I do might and actually most likely won't be the same as what other people do and so if you're looking for real steps and tutorials on how to do things for yourself I would definitely recommend watching someone else who does this more often like I said feel free to leave me any tips or tricks that you've learned um, down below and I'll be happy to read them and give them a shot in fact some of the things that I am gonna be doing today are things that I've learned from friends who have definitely got a lot more practice than I do and I'm really grateful for those kind of tips so right now that is my disclaimer I I'm not professional. I am not very well versed in things, but I have asked for some help, especially considering I'm working on a much more vintage doll today and I don't want to ruin it more than it already has been. My goal here is to make her beautiful, not unbearable. I don't even know what I just said. Now that she's all bald and beautiful, I'm going to stick her inside of a Ziploc bag and then stick her inside some boiling water until her head is soft enough for me to carefully pop it off. How you like my wharf Barbie Chino here? Probably doesn't taste very good, not gonna lie. I'm not gonna leave her in there too long because I don't want to ruin her. Let's give her a test. It's been about 30 seconds. Some people say they only need about 15 seconds, others need a bit more. I guess it depends on what kind of head your doll has. Oh, I guess I didn't need that much. Perfect! 
Now we gotta take out the rest of her hair so she looks like Sinead O'Connor, aka Jen in grade seven. Yes, I was bald. Yeah, you can snuff up your nose at me. So I'm gonna move Worf out of the way for now in case I still need him to warm up her head a bit more later. And I'm gonna proceed to removing the rest of her hair. And this is definitely simpler once her head is warm because it's much easier for her hair to wiggle loose from all of those holes since the vinyl is a bit more flexible right now. And a funny thing I noticed over the years is that when I was watching other people's videos, this process always looked so easy. And I quickly discovered when making my two previous customs that it took upwards of 30 minutes to get all of their hair out. Like they might show themselves using tweezers and stuff, but they are definitely using other tools, which is why I'm using a combination of both tweezers and whatever this tool is that came in a set that my husband picked up for me off Amazon to use when I'm making miniature crafts. And if I remember, I'll leave a link in the description below in case you wanna pick one up, because honestly, I love this set. Many of the pieces inside came in very handy when doing the reroutes. Not the actual rerouting process, but scooping and scraping along the inside, especially the ones with rounded edges, because otherwise you start to panic. Like, am I gonna poke through this vinyl? Am I scraping too much? I don't wanna ruin this doll more than she already is. But with some time and patience and a tip from a friend who said a screwdriver works really well, which is what made me look for this kit to begin with because I knew I had some cool tools inside and more patience, you'll soon have a perfectly bald doll and hopefully she is not more destroyed than when you started. By the way, if you saw this big hole at the top of her head while I was taking out her hair, don't worry, this is meant to be here. Since she is a ballerina Barbie, she would have come with a crown. Unfortunately, hers is missing, which is why there's a massive hole here. But since I'm giving her a new look, it's not a big deal. But of course I can't do anything until I've given her a nice cleaning. So I'm just gonna go upstairs and do that off camera so the video doesn't take 10,000 hours. All right, so I'm back with my cleaned body and now I'm ready to get started on actually doing things for her. But before I can do anything, I'm gonna need to remove all the paint from her head. And for that, I'm gonna be using pure acetone. So that would be her scalp as well as her face. I need to remove all the paint that's here so that I have a nice clean canvas to work on later when I give her a new look. And now we can actually see the extent of that permanent marker's reach, oh my gosh. But now it's bare and it's gonna be ready for a new look when I get the nerve to uh, paint it on. But I'm not ready for that part yet because to be honest, if I spend all my time doing that and then I reroute her and end up ruining it, I'm gonna be pretty annoyed with myself. So I'm just gonna leave her blank and start on her hair, which is probably the best thing that I could do, especially since it's gonna take quite a long time to reroute and then to dry once I've set it. Besides, I need to have an idea of what her hair says about her as a person before I go making her a face. Does that make sense? Hopefully, because it's what I'm thinking. Such an awkward thing to do. Ooh, true story, guys. <laughs> I started rooting her and I forgot to paint her scalp black first. Way to go, Jen. So um, let me just take all of this out. So sad. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, so pretend that never happened and um, I'm gonna get started by painting my doll's scalp black with some acrylic paints. That way we won't see any pink skin or permanent markered gray skin later on if we part her hair. Yeah, let's just consider that a little lesson that I was teaching you there. Uh-huh, it makes sense. Anyways, so now that I've painted her head and it's dry, we can go ahead and start rooting. Once again, just a reminder, the things you see me doing here are probably frowned upon or even wrong, but I'm 100% honest all the time with you guys and so I am one, scared, but two, not ashamed to say that the things I'm using today are cheap fixes or solutions to a problem, which is that I start many hobbies and then give up on them or don't start them and have a bunch of stuff lying around. Believe it or not, I do that a lot. And so I've found that I've been wasting money over the years on a bunch of stuff that I haven't even tried yet. Like if you could see behind me the things that I don't show you guys, you would be like, oh, Jen. So as you can see, I'm kind of speeding through this footage here, but I am rerouting this doll using a homemade rerouting tool, which a friend told me how to do. Basically, it's the handle from a refillable X-Acto knife with the blade removed and a needle inserted instead with the top of the eye portion cut off, which gives me a hook that I can use to pick up the hair and stick it into the doll's scalp. It works the exact same way, or so I'm told and have to believe because I mean, I've made two dolls so far. Quick pause to the video just to say that this looks terrifying, like something I would never want anywhere near my person 
person, and yet I can't help but think of it as a sentient being that sprang into existence after I've conditioned my hair or something and pulled out all the extra knots. Like, this is the creature from the shower, and now I'm terrified. I'm gonna have nightmares, and if you do too, I'm sorry. It's not my fault, but I couldn't be alone. Anyways, back to rooting. One tip that I do have, though, is if you're gonna be making your own rerouting tool and need to cut the eye to make a hook, definitely have one of those, like, magnetic dishes nearby or use magnetic scissors because when that little piece goes flying, you have no way of finding it and you do not want to step on it. It may have been rounded when it was part of the needle, but now it's a missing two-pronged piece of pain dust. So yeah, use something magnetic and do it in an area where you can see where it falls, like maybe on white bristol board or something. Another tip that I have is do not use cheap dollar store needles. They snap off quite a bit because they aren't a very good quality. By the way, I found that it definitely helps to have a shorter needle or tool, I suppose, to prevent snapping. Anyways, as you can see, I've just been picking up pieces of hair using my homemade rerouting tool and inserting it into the doll's scalp, gently pushing all the way to the base and then pulling out slowly and repeating the process about 3,000 times. By the way, it's really hard to show off what you're doing and not block the camera with your hands. So I'm kind of moving all over the place. Sorry about that. Hopefully it's manageable for you. So when it comes to the hair, I either use doll donors, which would be a doll that has has nice long hair in good condition, but I don't plan on really keeping, which is how I restored my first Barbie's head. Or my personal favorite is to pick up hair extensions because there are so many different textures and colors and depending on what they're made out of, they can be heat resistant or can even be dyed into different colors. So that's what I'm using today in a shiny black with some silvery hairs thrown in. But like I said, in the future, if it turns out I really like this hobby, I'll definitely be able to check into some of the fancier hair that you can buy online that comes in different colors like oh my gosh, those pastels. And I started around the outside, by the way, making sure to work my way in. And when I get to the part in the center, I'm making sure to go into each hole twice. That way I'll be able to separate the hair after and not have a visible scalp line. As for the hole in the center of her head, I think I'm gonna leave it right now so that I can try to make my own crown. Initially, I was gonna try to fill it, but I don't know. I kinda wanna see what I come up with. Worst case scenario, I can find a way to fill it in later and add hair. Hey guys, check it out. My Barbie is looking positive spider dandelion rific. She looks so cool. I think we can all agree she looks fabulous. And as you can see, I am finished rerouting her head. In total, that took three and a half hours, not including the first round of rerouting that I did before taking it all out to paint her head, which by the way, has all come off. The irony is not lost on me. I took that time, I wasted that time because I mean, yeah. Anyways, as you can see, I have some shedding here, so I should probably stop playing with it and instead fill the inside of her head with some Fabri-Tac and zhuzh it around with a Q-tip. I just gotta make sure none of it comes out the top of that hole where the crown should be, because that would suck. And there we go. And then leave her to dry. A lot of people say at least two to three hours should be good, but honestly, I'm just gonna leave her overnight and start working on maybe her outfit or something, because I swear I am not doing any more rerouting to this doll. All right, so at this point, I'm not gonna lie, I have no clue what I wanna make, but I do know that I have a few different fabrics that I really like the look of. So I'm just gonna play around with a few different things, and if I'm happy with it, start sewing. Honestly, I know there are so many better ways to make clothing, but I'm not a very good seamstress, and patterns are not my forte. So my plan is basically drape things over, see how I like it, and if it kinda resembles something nice, I'm gonna pin it down and then hopefully sew it into place, I guess? To be honest, I'm not sure what parts I'm gonna use in the end or if any of it will turn out, but I mean, at least you're watching the process and hopefully it comes together into something that looks presentable. All right, so here's the first piece. I'm actually pretty surprised with how well it turned out just by draping and pinning the fabric. Honestly, it was a little tricky, but it turned out way better than this mixed fabric one I made off camera. And I actually tried to do this one properly with a pattern and everything. I legitimately wrapped my doll in saran wrap and tape, cut it up and created all all the pieces to a bodice so that I could trace it onto fabric, cut it out, and sew it together. And although it looks okay, I think the other method works better for me. And now we know! But if I'm being honest, I'm not sure how I want to finish this yet, whether it's a long skirt, short skirt, tulle, tutu, or what. And I kind of want to try using the red fabric, so I'll come back to this later. Okay, so I'm gonna get started by tracing this bodysuit-like shape that I cut out of paper onto some red fabric, and then cut it out and repeat it three more times. Once on this same red fabric,
fabric and then twice on a sequined red fabric. Then I'm going to pin everything together and start sewing it up at the places you would expect a bodysuit to be attached. This would make more sense if I had done it on a sewing machine, but for some reason I prefer to hand stitch and it's easier on camera. So this is what I went with. It looks like a hot mess right now and I know every sewer out there is cringing. I'm so sorry. Work with me here. I'm trying my best. <laughs> it might turn out really bad. Luckily I've got more fabric and a few other ideas just in case. But as for right now, I'm pleasantly surprised with the end result, at least of the inside. I haven't flipped it yet. It could still be awful, but fingers crossed it isn't. Here we go. Moment of truth. I really hope these holes are big enough. Oh my gosh. Oh, it might be too, <laughs> too small. Dang it. I'm so impressed with how good it turned out, but I don't think it's going to fit. No, I worked so hard on this. I spent like an hour and a half stitching. Oh my gosh. Okay. You know what? I'm going to try it on a doll. How do I know this is going to go horribly? In my defense, I'm sure I'll be able to find a doll somewhere that can wear this, but for the record, I'm kind of sad right now because, I mean, I expected it to either fail but fit and just look ugly or look really, really good and somehow, miraculously, it all just worked out. But <laughs> right now, I'm going with total sadness. I don't even know. All right, well, that went nowhere in a hurry. Next! All right, new plan because I started wrapping the fabric around the body to see why it didn't work and what might work. And I'm kind of digging this, even though I'm not really a fan of single straps or off the shoulder looks. This headless body is really feeding me some Jessica Rabbit vibes. So I'm going to start pinning things until I have a win. We're going to call this game pin and win. OK, but I've learned and we're going to do it inside out because the last time I did this, I pinned it all and it looked fantastic. And I realized I'm not going to sew it on the outside and so I had to take all those pins out and it was not something I was able to recreate. So Jen has learned from this experience and uh, hopefully we can figure it out. Not gonna lie, I'm just gonna make this up as I go. Like I said, all the seamstress type people and sewers and customizers out there are probably cringing and I don't blame you, okay? I really don't. My novice skill level is offensive to even myself. This has got a good stretch to it luckily, so I think, I mean, I hope I can work with it. I mean, how tight do we want that? Do you remember when I was so meticulous in cutting things? that Jen has left the building. Now we're going with Jen, if she was Sid from Toy Story. We've got a decapitated doll here, a ton of pins, and pure nonsense. And hopefully it works for us. <laughs> I mean, inside out, that looks proper. So now I'm just gonna slip it off her body and attempt to sew it together. I probably should have done this while it was on her body. I don't know why I always do this because this is where everything gets messed up, but I'm doing it. <laughs> Now that I've stitched right down the length of the dress, I'm kind of going to leave a gap from her calf to her ankle, just in case I decide to add like a little mermaid frill or something. Kind of like a trumpet style dress. I don't know if I'm going to yet, but I might. Or maybe even a super long slit. I'm not sure. Regardless, this is where I'm stopping and I'm going to fold back this excess fabric and stitch up and down each side. That way I could just trim it and know that it's nice and clean. Then I'm going to make a big huge mess with a bunch of sequins as I cut off the excess fabric. And then I'm going to flip it inside out and try it on my doll. As long as it fits better than the bodysuit I made, I think we can work with it. Oh snap! She looks fabulous. I'll just need to add a closure to the back, but not yet. Because I'm thinking I can make an optional over-the-top statement piece to add drama to this dress. I'll just use a bit of the red strap here that I measured to fit her waist, and then I'll clean it up by folding in and sewing the edges and adding closures to both sides. That way we can have easy use. Next, I'll take this giant blob of glittery black tulle, gross, and stitch through the top, gently pulling as I go. That way I can create a tight waist-like appearance that fans out at the bottom. Before adding it to my strap though, because I do need to sew it on, I'm just gonna test both pieces on the doll's body so I know where I'd like the tulle to start. I'm gonna use a needle and thread to mark it and get my first stitch in. That way I don't mess it up once I take it off her body. And then I can start sewing, making sure to pull the red strap a bit as I go. Since it's elastic, I don't want the thread to snap later when I try to put it on the body and it stretches. 
Once it's all ready, it's time to test the fit, snap it up, and guys, this is looking pretty great. By the way, if anybody noticed that my doll suddenly has a bit more of a tan, it's because I swapped bodies after making this black and white piece because she is just super floppy and fiddly, and it was just driving me bonkers. So anyways, that's the answer to that question that you may have had on your mind. Regardless, this is what I'm working with, and I'm really surprised at how good it looks. Definitely dramatic, over the top. I kind of wish it wasn't so obvious that both pieces start over here. Kind of wish it covered it a bit, but I guess with a little zhuzhing that might be possible. Regardless, it turned out really well for something that I just decided to do. Although there is a rip in the tool and all the glitter falls off. Other than that, it's pretty great and definitely does its job of adding drama to the look, but also simple elegance if we remove it. But since it did turn out surprisingly well, I'm going to leave it on the doll's body for now because, as you can see, the storage of this tulle skirt was less than wonderful and it looks like pure and utter trash. So I'm going to squish it down and use elastic bands to hold it to the doll's body until it starts to cooperate a bit. Hopefully overnight's enough because that's our timeline. There we go. Just like that. She's a little... Oop! Dropped. She, she's a little burrito of sequins and gross glitter. Ew. Hey guys, I'm back and it's a new day. A day in which my Barbie has dried. Well, actually the glue completely set overnight. As you can see, I've popped the head onto her body and you know what? Her hair is sticking all over the place. So I went ahead and gave it a nice boil to make it flat. She kind of just blends in seamlessly with my own hair, don't you think? Gray's included. Now she's starting to resemble Morticia Adams. Of course, she still needs a face, but I'm not really sure what I want to do yet since I don't know how I'm going to style her hair, but I can't style her hair until I figured out what her clothes say about her. I know I said that about her hair, but I've got a lot going on in my brain. To be honest, I think I'm just putting off doing her face. I'm a little nervous. I don't know how it's going to turn out. And yeah, I'm just going to prolong the inevitable for as long as I can, which is um, the perfect moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Sweet. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of interesting and creative classes like gardening, crafting, photography, and so many others. But one set of classes I was really excited to find and watch was called Make Your Own Junk Journal, instructed by Helen Colebrook. Especially since I had bought supplies and decided last year that I'd be giving junk journaling a go in 2022. I really like the patience and tone of Helen's voice, as well as her step-by-step -step instructions and tips for beginners. Ooh, and definitely love that she uses cycling to get started. I find it really convenient that I can choose the playback speed on lessons. I did choose to watch it at regular speed, but I know so many people have a hard time focusing when audio isn't as quick, so I feel like it's worth mentioning. Also, there are subtitles available in at least five languages. And since Skillshare is ad-free, I know that I can go back and watch these videos over and over whenever I want to, meaning that I can enjoy the hobby with confidence and check in on what I'm doing if I need to. So yeah, I really enjoyed Helen's lessons and can't wait to dive into junk journaling this year. And because Skillshare is ad-free, I know that I can go back and watch these videos over and over whenever I want to, and that I can enjoy the hobby with confidence and check in on what I'm doing if I need to. And with new premium classes launching every week, I know that I've got tons of options for the future. So if Junk Journaling with Helen or any of the other thousands of classes on Skillshare sound interesting to you, then check it out for yourself. The first thousand people to use the link in my description box or my code NEXTGEN will get a one month free trial of Skillshare to check out whatever you think you might be interested in. So thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video, and now, back to our custom doll. All right, so here we go. This is my doll, guys. I'm so excited to put off doing her face just a little longer to show you what her hair turned out like. Of course, it did not look this straight when it was dry. I came down here in the morning and it definitely looked more like this, the spider creature from the shower. So I popped her inside of a Ziploc bag, stuck her in some boiling water and Viola. We have something a bit more manageable to work with. But first things first, I want to try on her dress so far. I definitely still haven't finished the bottom, don't judge that. Because I need to know if it's going to work or if I need to come up with something else. I can't do her hair or makeup until I know what she's going to be wearing because could you imagine a super dramatic look but I end up giving her like a school marm outfit? Like I'm sure it would be hilarious but not practical. Anyways, as you can see it actually looks pretty good. She's giving me some share vibes right now. Oh wait, no, we got to try on that tool. And the elastic band process definitely made it look a lot better by the way, so that's exciting. And there we go. How great is that? Let me just flip up the bottom of the fabric so it looks like I've done my work. Hold on. Wow, amazing, right? She would look so cool if her hair and face were already done miraculously by anyone but me, don't you think? Oh my god. 
gosh. And I'll just pop her on a stand and Viola. She looks way better than she has any right to right now, especially without a face or good hair. Could you imagine how amazing it would be if she suddenly was just done? But of course, we do not have that kind of luck here. So it's up to me to make her beautiful. Totally ready to dive into this project, guys, with nothing but gusto and enthusiasm. And of course, I still need to cut her hair so that I can style it. Honestly, I don't trust myself to do that reaching around a camera. I know I'm going to mess it up. So I'll do that off to the side. All right, done. Now I'm going to take different sections of her hair, put it in little ponies. And here she is after a half hour upside down spa treatment of boiling water. I needed to train her hair to go upwards so that it would be easier to style later on. And as you can see, she is rocking this Sailor Moon villain look. It's almost like there's snakes coming out of her head. If I didn't have a vision in mind, I would try to work with this because I'm kind of digging it. But sadly, this high pony is just not going to do it for me and uh, I'm going to need to continue. But first, I'm going to try removing some of the gray with an acne treatment. I've never done this before, so hopefully it goes well. But from what I've gathered, as long as it's a benzoyl peroxide cream or gel, it should work. I wrapped up her hair to make sure her face was nice and clean, applied the cream, put some plastic wrap on and set her in the sun because that's what the internet said to do. But I feel like it was a waste of time. Now, I did film the first couple rounds, but chose to skip one of the cleaning and reapplications because honestly, nothing happened. So I gave up on that method and chose to just apply the cream and rest her under my microwave light, which gives off warmth. And you know what? It worked, okay? I don't know if it's the heat that did something or if it was the lights, but regardless, this worked way better. And honestly, after six rounds of the treatment, she would have been perfectly fine to start painting, but I chose to do two more just to really clean up her scalp line. All right, so this is what I'm working with after like seven to eight, I guess, treatments of the pimple cream. What, what? Let's give it up for the pimple cream because dang, she looks good. I mean, they're still staining along the top. I'm not going to deny that. And it looks kind of yellowy, but it's way better than what she was working with. And now it's time to give her a face because right now this looks really creepy. And no matter how focused I try to make the camera, it just looks blurry. And that's because it has nothing to actually pinpoint on her. So we got to deal with that. And I think I'm going to do one thing at a time. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I put a lot of thought into how I was going to do her face. But at the end of the day, I am going with my tried and true. I know how to use this medium acrylic paint and paintbrush method. I honestly wish I had better skills of watercolor pencils and any artistic talent whatsoever in order to do that. But I don't. It's the truth. I also don't have access to Mr. Super Clear in a reasonable amount of time, nor the patience to spray, wait 30 minutes, do a little bit of work over and over. In fact, I applaud the people who actually do this as a profession or a hobby. They are amazing. Also, I don't have a respirator or one of them fancy masks. So yeah, acrylic paints for me. It's time to get started and I'm not sure what people usually do, but I'm going to be working in a top down fashion. So I guess that means eyebrows first. And I am so nervous. Also, I apologize for the view. I'm not used to capturing such tiny movements, but I really got to make sure that I'm doing my best here and oh no 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 oh as you can see we are off to a fantastic start but don't worry i can clean this up or at least that's what i'm telling myself all right let's try this again maybe we'll start a little further over here this time i feel like that's not too bad or at least it wasn't until i messed it up <laughs> yeah that looks horrible new plan eyeballs first they seem so much less threatening i mean how hard is it to paint an eye area white and i will be giving her some eyeliner and stuff after so it doesn't have to be too perfect but I definitely don't want it to look bulky it's bad enough I'm gonna be using acrylics which are streaky as is but it doesn't have to look like garbage you know that looks pretty good now on to the next one I'm gonna try my best to make it match I mean we saw what she looked like before so as long as I take my time and do super tiny brushstroke removals with water to clean everything up I think it's gonna work out I know this must be oh so interesting for you guys. But you know, I think it looks pretty good and I'm proud of myself, even if it is just a small win. So I'm going to let this dry completely and then go in again with another coat of the white that's been thinned out with water just to smooth everything out, get rid of streaks and make it more opaque. Oh my gosh, I know it's just been her eyes so far, but guys, I have been shaking this whole time. I am so glad I didn't style her hair yet because it would have been destroyed. But anyways, that's done and now it's time to move on to her lips. 
vibes. Um, okay, so I've effectively matched the skin tone. That is quite lovely, but not gonna do it for me. So I'm gonna go in with a darker shade. See, this is better. I think we're on the right track. I mean, I'm definitely gonna need to clean it up because right now it does not look good, but yeah, this is gonna work. The real question is, am I feeling brave enough to go darker? I'm thinking yes. And once it dries, I think I'm gonna add a bit more of a bright dark red just so that she can match her outfit because although I'm loving this right now, in person, it's more of a maroony brown even though it looks bright red on the camera. It's so strange. So yeah, I definitely need to brighten up the in-person color. And then of course, when everything dries, I'll be adding a gloss, but not until I finish her entire face, just in case I wanna switch things up. Although right now, I'm not thinking it's gonna happen. All right, and that is it for her lips. Now I'm gonna go in with a gold that's got just the slightest amount of red paint mixed into it and shade her eyelids. You wouldn't think that it's such a skill to make sure each one matches, but apparently it is. Now I'm just gonna take a bit more of that gold mixed with red and add it to her lips so that everything ties together. And then onto her eyes, where I get smart and use a glue nozzle cap to give me a perfect iris stencil so I don't have to screw anything up. I know, I'm a genius. I filled the circles in with browns and gold, gave her black winged liner, golden eyeliner, added her pupils and catch lights, and now back to the evil brows of doom. I mean, it shouldn't be so hard to make them look like this, but apparently Apparently it is, at least for me. Although to be fair, I really do want some thick don't mess with me bro brows and I think that's where it's going wrong. It's pretty hard to make them match up. I'll get one looking great and then the other is like, nope. So I definitely finished up a lot of the tedious work off camera. But once I was happy with everything, I used a matte sealer on her eyeshadow and brows and a gloss sealer on her eyes and lips. And here's what she looks like now. Nothing but drama, brows, and elegance, which is only brought out even more by this super cute nighty and robe. And you guys would have no clue unless I told you like I am now, but I spent six and a half hours on her eyes and brows alone. Would I change a thing or two if I had more time? Yes. Would I mess it up and probably make it worse? Also yes. Which is why I'm stopping now. Even if one eyebrow is way higher than the other, giving us super evil vibes. I know you noticed it. But let me remind you what she looked like when I started. It was a pretty long video, maybe you've forgotten, but we started with a hot permanent markered mess that included hair, skin, and scalp. So like I said, I am pretty proud with how well she turned out. Also really amazed at how well that cream worked at removing the gray from her skin. I mean, she even looks cute like this in her original outfit. The difference is unreal, honestly. I put in so much work, even if she does have one super high arched brow on the right. She's just got more attitude. But anyways, as you can see and are probably thinking, Jen, she looks great and we know you made her a dress and you obviously spent way too much time putting in all her hair, so why don't you style it already? Well, the truth is, I don't know what I want to do anymore. I separated it and pulled it up so that it would be ready to style, but all the little pieces that are hanging down and have a slight wave to them look so beautiful and elegant and now I kind of want to take it all out and give her a boil and like have it set this way. I don't know what to do, honestly. So I'm gonna decide off camera and then I'm gonna come back with her final look in three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, this gal needs a name, but if she had one, she wouldn't need to be introduced. But let's get her a name, okay? Drop your comments below. But anyways, head to toe, this raven beauty is dripping mystery in her over-the-top glam look. The first dress that I completed, you guys watched me do it. She's rocking that Jessica Rabbit meets way too big tutu look, don't you think? But let's not forget, if you're not a fan of the over-the-top drama, we can remove it for a much simpler elegance. I chose to pair this dress here with a classic Barbie short heel just because I had another pair in mind but I felt that since it was a vintage doll with a vintage looking face mold, new shoes just didn't make sense. And I'm happy with this decision. But I was also very happy with how much better I was getting at hand stitching guys. So I made more outfits. This time around she's wearing a black beautiful velvet strapless dress covered in silver stars. Unfortunately this is glitter but I didn't have to touch 
match it. It was already on the fabric, so I'm okay with it. Now this number here is elegant. It's very understated and perfect for any situation that my non-living doll would like to attend. But if we need some more over-the-top drama, don't forget, we've got accoutrement. Not gonna lie, the tutu doesn't really work here, but that's okay because I have an over-the-top statement piece in the form of this super shiny red bow. Yes, you know you love it. It doesn't make sense, honestly. It is way too big, but I think it's really fun. It adds color in the front in the form of the little red belt. And then of course the bow at the back gives us a lot more BAM. And for our third and final look, our beauty of the night is wearing once again a mix of that black beautiful velvet fabric as well as some of a pillowcase. She just looks like she's going to a black and white gala in a cold season. But the exciting thing about this one here is although it is beautiful in this current state, we can remove the gloves and the arm poofs for a more naked look, which is also beautiful. Full disclosure, I did not make the gloves or the little arm poofs that are there. Those are borrowed from a holiday doll. I loved the idea of it, but I just didn't have the patience, desire, or will to make them myself. The belt is also borrowed, by the way, from a different holiday doll. I am really proud of this dress. I think it is beautiful, and it's probably my favorite of the three. Honestly, I'm really happy with her hair as well. It did take me a few minutes, and by minutes I mean a longer time than that, to decide how I wanted her hair to actually look in the end, but I think this look here works best with all of these outfits. And I think leaving it a bit more simple than I had initially planned allows for the face and the dresses to actually be the spotlight focus. Okay guys, that's it for me and this gorgeous beauty right here. We've come a long way since her thrift store beginnings and I gotta say, she truly is a Cinderella story. Of course, she still needs a name though and although I can come up with many, none of them seem to suit her face. So if you think you have a good suggestion, be sure to leave that down below and I mean, if there's so many great ones that I still can't decide, we might have to leave it up to a poll. Don't worry, girl. We're gonna get you a name. <laughs> you deserve a name. She deserves a name, guys. Okay, let me just fix her bosom because one booby looks like it's falling out. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this crazy long one month plus, I guess, adventure of me filming whenever I could the process of fixing up this doll. We have come a long way and I am very, very pleased with the outcome. Just a friendly reminder, none of the things that I did are to be recommended, I guess is what I'm saying, because I learn by error. That's just my MO, I suppose. So if you're interested in doll customization, I would definitely look to professionals or people who have devoted channels to customization and are very well versed in the art and practices because chances are they would frown upon this video. But for me, it was a labor of love and learning on the go. But in the end, like I said, she turned out beautiful and I absolutely love everything about her except the fact that she has no name. Yes, still bringing that up. <laughs> Anyways, if you know somebody who would enjoy today's video because maybe they like to see the beginning, middle, and end of something that was awful come into beauty, then please share it with them. And if you enjoyed it yourself, then please make sure you remember to comment, like, and subscribe. You can let me know down below what you liked or didn't like about today's video and any helpful hints or suggestions you have for my customization future. Or you could just suggest a name or just say, you know, good job, Jen. She's not horrible. <laughs> oh, also tell me which of the outfits was your favorite. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.